What's up everybody, it's your boy Showtime Doctor coming at you with the oops I scrolled down too far Adam Mueller guide. So this guy's currently on the banner Got a bunch of requests for this. I'm gonna do, be doing this video on Luna today <clears throat> Luna guide so look forward to that So let's get into it here. So we'll go over the passive real quick uh, most people will play him as a flyer unit, by the way, but you do have the option to play him as either a ground unit, more of a sword unit, or a uh, cavalry unit. And yes, I know people make fun of me. Cavalry, whatever. <laughs> Before entering battle, attack, this is the passive Supreme Overlord. Attack increases by 3%. Physical damage taken decreases by 2%. Last three turns can be stacked up to three times. Now, unfortunately, they don't have the six-star version on that website, so I gotta bring it up here. And there it is. Upon entering combat, attack increases by 10%. Reduced physical damage taken by 5%. And lasts four turns, and it now stacks four times versus three times. So... Uh, if you get all four stacks of that, that's going to give you 40% attack. Let me look up. I forgot the rest of the math here. 20% damage reduction. So, pretty strong overall, especially considering most people are going to be playing him as a Hawk Knight. So, he's going to be out and about in dangerous situations. So, let's get into it here. So, I'm going to go over the Hawk Knight through Dragon Master build. I'll show you guys the general build, and then Highlander actually has some decent stuff too. But we'll start with Hawk Knight. So, right when you get him, <clears throat> this is going to be... He's going to have Lightning. Uh, it's very similar to... you got, Everyone has Sherry, pretty much. Most people have Sherry, unless you just start the game recently. Pretty much exact same kit as Sherry here, as far as the beginning. Lightning with Healing, Passive Healing. After attacking, this passive healing is going to come into great play later. I'll show you why. Uh, lightning, it's the same way. If you kill someone with it, the cooldown's reduced. You can basically use it twice. However, uh, he does not get an extra turn, at least not right away. So, roll over to Dragon Knight now. So, Dragon Knight, you got your choice. Uh, personally, I would actually pick... Griffin Cavalry, and I'll show you guys why later, but you can go Mini Devils if you want. Just one redu reduces damage and one increases damage at different percentages. So, your results may vary, whatever you want to do. Now, he's going to get a passive here. Defense of all allies within two blocks increases by 10%. Um, the issue with this is, this is highly dependent on if you're running him with another flyer or someone else with high mobility. He's going to be near, like a Sherry etc then this is actually pretty good otherwise uh, in most cases my opinion unless you're keeping them in the front line for whatever reason maybe if you run them as a horse unit or whatever uh, this isn't going to be super super useful in most cases but i mean more defense never a horrible thing especially since it's all allies within 10 percent or excuse me within two blocks so that that could turn out to be a good lifesaver later now dragon master once he gets down here you get the Royal Griffin, you get the Vampire Bet. Please, please, please choose the Vampire Bet. Buff the Vampire Bet with your troopers. Just get to it. Buff, 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 buff. You can use a Royal Griffin guy if, if you're on like a map that's like low level and you just want to one-shot more things and guarantee one-shots because this will give you more attack and defense. That's perfectly fine. But in most cases, you're going to want the Vampire Bet because... Not only, like I told you guys earlier, will you have, if you want it, 20% troop healing after combat, but the vampire bet after combat, initiating combat, can restore 15% of damage dealt after battles. So you just got this rolling army that's impossible to kill unless you're one shoutable or close to one shoutable by whatever you're fighting. So, and if that was the case, then yeah, you're probably gonna go Royal Griffin, but otherwise. The region on these bats is just going to be insane. And then even more, so check out what you get right now. You get Gale. After attacking, 20% 20, 20 chance to attack again. That's where he's going to get his extra attack. So if you're lucky, this will proc after you use Lightning. Lightning's cooldown is back. And then you could use this again. And then you got Dragon's Breath. It's an AoE, two blocks, puts the debuffs up, and grants Wind Ride, which is a... Uh, when HP is above 50%, damage taken from melee attacks is decreased by 50 per 
So you see in the middle tree, there's a good amount of attack, but there's also a lot of damage reduction, as well as lifesteal or regen stuff. So you also get this Gale passive. Now, if you're going uh, Hawk Knight, Dragon Knight, Dragon Master, and let's say you just unlock these three for now, uh, what I would probably do, like I said, I'd go Vampire Bat for most of my combats. Healing, Lightning, and like I said, you could skip this in most cases unless you know you're using them as some other class or you really want them by one certain unit. And then at that point, uh, you could just take Gale because as good as Dragon's Breath is, Dragon's Breath will be better than Gale if you're going to be fighting like a ton of enemies. And then okay, yeah, it's good to get rid of melee damage uh, percentage here. But otherwise, most people are going to go Gale because they want the 20% attack. Now, if you're going to go Gale, quite honestly, you should probably be rolling Royal Griffins for that extra attack damage and try to power through the level. But if it's a sustained level, such as a raid or uh, PvP, what have you, uh, you're going to want to go Vampire Bat. You can take Gale again if you wish and then just forego the initial regen. Or you could keep the regen, roll Vampire Bat, and then get rid of Dragon's Breath. Because I know people are going to say, but Dragon's Breath gives you that damage reduction. I'll show you guys some other stuff later that gives you more. Uh, but just keep that in mind. So, Because most people, you're going to want the chance to attack again, no matter what you do in most cases. So, But if you're going heavy tank build, then Vampire Bat, Dragon's Breath. And then come up here and get... Uh, lightning and healing. Now you can get rid of lightning also if you want for Dragon's Breath, but that's you know single target versus AOE, whatever you want to do there. So we'll go to Highlander real quick. I'll show you what's over here. Uh, you got your cavalry and your elite infantry, so you guys should know by now. You know if you're fighting spearmen, get infantry. If you're spite fighting uh, infantry, you get cavalry. But the cool part about this one is Endure, when entering battle, defense is increased by 7%. So now you're probably wondering, but you said defense isn't that great. Well, if you're going to go the general build, general slash grand master, you notice you get all these tankier units here. This becomes kind of a tanking tree because it takes physical damage instead of nearby ally when attacked at 7% of attack to defense. And then likewise, grand marshal is actually going to give you We'll go over the faction buff in a bit, but it gives you another passive. That's basically the guard range, two blocks, grants buffs, block and barb, a uh, block damage reduction. Barb, a certain amount of fixed damage, depending on your defense. Multiple defense is going to be dealt to most enemies. Some enemies are immune, like most dragons, etc. Uh, so he'll kind of turn into a tank unit if you choose to go this route. Now, Battlefield Master, if you are rolling Strategic Master... And you got this guy. That's This isn't a bad uh, tree to go down. Uh, it's just I don't see most people do Strategic Master. But, you know, if, if that happens to be what you're doing, then this is for you here. So, of course, every faction buff attack and defense increases uh, for all people of the faction. Strategic Master in this case. Now, all passable terrain is treated as planes when moving. If the terrain increases defense your attack is increased by 15 percent so what that's telling you is if you run across something and you can move past it so say it's like a tree uh you know a gate castle wall etc it's going to treat as a plane for moving so the barrier portion of it is not going to affect anyone with this buff on so you can still pass it as long as you have the movement space to pass it and that's actually um, I'm not going to give a build, per se, for the cavalry unit, per se. But if you are going to build for this, you're going to want all the stuff that increases his movement. Or whichever unit you have in this uh, strategic master that you want their movement to go crazy with. So, like, the boots, whatever they're called, the Hermes boots for the uh, artifacts. That gives you additional movement, etc. So... <clears throat> Uh, anyways, though, but if you land on something that has defense, not only are you getting the defense buff, but you're also getting increased attack. So that's actually pretty sexy. Can be really useful in PvP because you're not going to get, you know, assuming that everyone on your PvP team gets this faction buff, you're not going to get the penalties for 
uh, moving past difficult terrain such as trees, but the enemy still is in most cases. So just something to play with there if you're going to go this route. I just wanted to show you guys that. And then if I was doing this, yeah, I'd get the faction buff if I'm rolling that faction. I'd take strong arms for the extra defense. And then quite honestly, because if you look at general, you know, you get the passive defense. And, you know, that's not terrible, but in most cases, if you're doing a PvP build, you're going to be using the active defense turn one or two. So you don't necessarily need this unless, you know, someone has some extra mobility or whatever. So in that case, I would actually just go over to Highlander and get the when entering battle defense is increased by 7% because your barb is going to go off. It's a percentage of your defense. Yada, yada, yada. So... Of course, I guess you could do it. I guess this just depends on how big your attack is. So your results may vary there. Early game, though, the other one's going to be better. In Highlander, late game, this could very well be better just because of percentage bonuses. And if you're rolling your enchants good. So, obviously with this guy, HP is important on everybody. Uh, defense very important, especially if you're going the left tree, strategic master tree, otherwise attack and skill. Defense never bad, you can always get that as well. M defense, useful. Just not as useful as it is on most tanking classes slash uh, DPS classes per se. So now we're going to get into enchants and... Let me find it here. Hmm, that's weird. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we're going to get into enchants and weapons. So uh, pay attention because the weapons portion of this, there are some very, or not the weapons, the, I believe it's the armor when we get to the armor. There's some very important things I want to show you. But all right. So first thing I'll recommend Ragnarok. Bonus to attack, and this is for the flyer, guys. I'm not doing one for defense again, because defense, most people should have figured out what's good for defense by now. Anything that multiplies your defense, or in the case of the magic defense tank, magic defense, etc. So, before initiating combat, 50% chance to deal fixed damage once to an enemy. Damage equals one time hero's attack. Well, I'll show you why this one would be super important later, but if you can chunk this guy, like say you're at 100%, the enemy's at 100%, uh, whoever initiates combat, whatever. And you manage to get a chunk of your attack, and he goes to, say, 80-70% health, let's say. Um, that will play well with a weapon I will show, or a armor piece, actually, I will show you guys later, so keep this in mind. So now we're gonna go to Blue Star. Blue Star has Meteor Strike, which is pretty nasty. Um, either you're going to be running this guy Calvary or you're going to be running a um, Flyer. <clears throat> so, attack defense and magic defense increase by 1% for every one block move up to 3%. These percentages will go up the more you level this. So this can actually turn pretty nasty. Having more of the three stats, all three stats are good for him. You know, never a bad thing there. And then we got Last Night, which I actually use on my Leon. But so most of us should have this if we did Sherry stuff. Um, so attack plus 2% before initiating combat. 25% chance to reduce the enemy's attack and intelligence by 1 or 20% rather. Uh, more survivability. Really good no matter what you're doing with Adam Wheeler. Especially tank or DPS. Well, I guess that's all he really does. <laughs> My bad. And then the Peacemaker. So we're going to show you that. <clears throat> Attack plus 2%. Before initiating combat, 25% chance to nullify enemy's passive skills. So most people's passive skills clearly useful, so if you can get rid of that uh, before combat, you know, that'll just be nice overall to increase survivability. So now we're going to get into the armor. So on 1-4, there's this thing called Demon Lizard Skin. HP plus 2%. When attacked, 25% chance to deal one random powerful debuff. Uh, still not clear exactly on what powerful debuffs is. I just know that they're better than normal debuffs. And, you know, it's like, well, duh. Well, like, no, but I think it's also percentage-based. Uh, those that have higher percentage debuffs than regular stuff. And they have, uh, you know, different a different lineup selection of what what can be selected now. Monkey King Vest, when attacked, attack and crit increases by 3%. Harder you hit, more survivability, especially if you have the bats like I showed you earlier. 
Bats are healing 15% of damage dealt in the battle, so more damage you're dealing, more heal you're getting. Uh, should make perfect sense. Now, this is what I want you guys to pay attention to, because most of you guys are going to be putting this on your healers and your casters. Last rites. Remember what I said earlier about being tanky, etc., etc., with the regen. We'll check this out. So defense plus 2%. When HP equals 100%, Damage taken is decreased by 40%. This is probably the top tier item you can get on Adam Mueller, especially, oh, actually either one, tank or DPS. But so picture this. So all that stuff that I showed you guys about, um, there's another piece I'm going to show you later that's going to make this make even more sense. But say you had last ride, right? Well, every time you're vamping, you got that 20% passive heal. Your bats are healing 15% of the damage dealt, so the more damage you're dealing and the less uh, damage they are dealing to you from all the stuff I've shown you earlier. As long as you can keep your HP at or close to that 100% and, you know, you got a pet healer and, of course, you get all the uh, different buffs slash debuffs like mass protect or whatever going on. Uh, you can keep this guy at 100%, especially... Uh, well, I already said that. Uh, the damage taken is going to be decreased by 40% a lot of the time. So if you get this guy, if you turn this guy into a life-stealing machine, he can be pretty nasty. Now, the things that are going to hold him back, uh, clearly archers, if he's flying, uh, pole units, etc. Anyone that can do range damage is going to be very difficult with this. But if you notice, it says all, it doesn't say physical damage or magic damage, all damage taken. So this could actually turn out to be at higher levels. You know, once you skill this up, maybe it goes to 50%. I don't know exactly how high it upgrades to, but this could be really good. And especially if this upgrades to say 90%, 80% HP, etc. Then that's going to be a force. So if you can get your guy with the last ride or so, a, a character similar to this, because remember his passive is also doing damage reduction up to 20% when you get them to six star. So keep this in mind, guys. Uh, last rights here. So I think I've gone over it enough. Now, helmet, I believe this is what I was thinking of. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, let me see. Yeah, so this is another damage mitigation. Oh, actually, this isn't what I was thinking of. But th this still helps, though. So HP, HP plus defense, 1%. More HP you do or more HP you have, the higher your percentage heals healing on your uh, one of the first skills you get, the 20% regen. After taking action, 25% chance to decrease damage dealt by 15% for one enemy within two blocks. Well, let's say you're going to dive bomb somebody and you know you blew everything you could to heal them, and now you're a sitting duck for an enemy that's within two blocks of you. Well, this is going to help reduce their damage even more and keep you high on that HP like I was talking about earlier. So, in my opinion, this is top tier for him, but, you know, it just depends who you got, what build you're going, etc. You never know. Now, accessories. Two accessories I'm going to show you. One's Thor's necklace. So, attack uh, bonus 1%. Before initiating combat, 25% chance to deal fixed damage once to the enemy. Well, if you can deal fixed damage to the enemy and you're a higher HP percentage of him then that's just going to help you with your regen and like I went over earlier, all the damage reduction and stuff that's working for you. But check this out. So Lone Star Amulet. When no allies are within two blocks, attack and defense increases by 2%. Well, oftentimes you're going to be taking Adam Mueller out, you know, basically on solo missions because his movement's going to be so high. To go and snipe, you know, a healer or a caster or whatever it is, you're going to take some damage. So the more, the harder you can hit and the more you can reduce defense, the better it is for you here. So with Thor's necklace though, if you can get uh, an attack off before and then make yourself at a uh, 100%. Let's go back and I'll show you guys. I don't remember which tree it was. Hmm, 
There was something about when he has a higher percentage. Maybe it was one of his troops. Well, anyways, there was something around here where when a certain thing has a higher percentage than whatever he's attacking, he gets bonus stats. It might have been one of the gear pieces, too. Whatever. Either way, I'd be looking for that. And then, uh, real quick, I'll go over enchants. Here we go. So, enchant, honestly... If you go on the build that I'm talking about with the damage reduction slash lifesteal, you gotta pick rough C in my opinion, because it's gonna increase, you know, your stats, whatever. Attack increased by 10%, damage taken is decreased by 15%. So you know, just super good overall adds to survivability. That's what I recommend for him. So and that's pretty much it, guys. So um yeah, if you are going to play this character, I've seen a lot of people be confused by his builds and they've kind of written him off already as a bad character. Hey, if you can get that gear I went over, try that out and see if you like it. Or even if you don't like it, maybe it'll work for another character. So I'll be looking for the Luna. I'm going to be releasing a Luna guy later today. Poke, poke, poke. <laughs> and anyways, guys, I'll catch you guys later on. Hope this guide helps you out. Have a great day. Peace. Oh, should I do a promo? Mm -hmm. Eh, why not? Yo, I'm Showtime Doctor, Showtime DR. You found my YouTube. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Also, check the title info. There's a link to my Twitch and my Discord. You know, you should know what both those things are by now. So, we'll catch you guys on another time. Peace.